<laughs> so, could you put the first PowerPoint up, please? Kian. Thank you, Kian. Boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> so, the morning's message is, uh, what do I do when I need a miracle and I don't feel like I've got any faith? Has anybody in a situation like any Christians? Yeah, always, <laughs> always. <laughs> What do I do? You come across a situation in your life, you think, oh man, I don't know what to do. Uh, I need a breakthrough here. Or, you, or, or there's somebody you love, somebody you know, and you, they need a breakthrough, and you're with them, and you don't know what to do. They could be on death's door. They could be having a terminal disease. They could have just lost their job, and their, their house is going to be taken away. And you go, oh God, I don't know what to do. I feel like that a lot. But some people think I have this incredible faith, this great faith that I just float into things and float out. And I guess that's why they ring me a lot. I don't have that great faith. I have only had the gift of faith operate in me about three times in my life, the gift of faith. And I want to talk with you what I do then when I don't feel like I've got faith. Put the next one up, please, Kim, please. I was in India in 2006, and I was at this meeting, and, um, and they, I, this, I saw this woman be carried in on a stretcher. I thought, oh, look at that. And she's sitting over there. And I felt God say to me that that scripture where it says, he said to the cripple, pick up your bed and walk. Uh, that, 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 that picture or that thought came into my mind. So I thought, I thought maybe that's God speaking to me to yell out, pick up your bed and walk. Okay? It wasn't great faith. It was just a thought. Maybe... That picture, that thought of the cripple that Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. Maybe I meant to speak that out. Okay? I didn't know whether anything would happen. I didn't have this great faith that she's going to jump up and run at the front. I didn't have that. What I did, I thought, I'll just obey and do what I know to do. <laughs> That's all. I'll just, I'll just obey. I said, ah, pick up your bed and run up the front. In Jesus' name, you're being healed. And she literally, physically did it. This is her when she can run right up on the stage and she's doing this. I love her. Look at her eyes. She's just, she was crippled. She was carried in a cripple, as a cripple. Don't I have great faith for that? Nah. We're going to show a couple of clips. Can we show clip video number one, please? This is a big testimony here that when this man come here, he cannot walk. And now during the sermon of Pastor Norm, Norm this man was healed now and now he start walking. So we give all the glory to Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This man was not in my meeting. This man, the place was too full. He was outside lying down on a stretcher on the street. They brought him on the stretcher. I didn't even know the guys out there. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know him. I didn't know there's a cripple lying on a stretcher out there. So it wasn't my faith. It had nothing to do with me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And he honors what Jesus did, not what I did. He honors what Jesus did. And all I was doing is telling the people there that Jesus loves you so much that he not only will forgive your sin, if you just open your heart and say, Lord, I receive forgiveness of sin, he will also take your sickness. Because Psalm 103 verse 3 says he forgives all iniquity. And heals all, not some, all disease. Now straight away, some minds are thinking, yeah, but it doesn't happen all the time. Forget about that. If you go down that track all the time, you're going to go down the track of doubt. And so I, I don't understand why not everyone gets healed, but that's not the point. The point is, <laughs> he forgives all our iniquity, that's the truth, and he heals all our disease. That's the truth, that's what he says. That's what truth says. So I just said that. This guy heard it, and obviously, the Holy Spirit confirmed those words, and he got up, and he starts walking. Here's another guy. Thanks, Kian. Oh, before you play it, sorry. Uh, this guy was Friday uh, afternoon, and he was sitting on a, on a stool, and he had his knee in a big, big bandage, and a cast, I think, and he had it up on a stool, had crutches, yeah, and... Um, he had broken his knee uh, in one place and his ankle in two places. And he had numerous operations, and two years later, it's all swollen. They're taking the plates out. There's no, they just can't, he won't heal up. So he, he's just in a mess. I said, oh, bro. And um, 
I said, how did you do that? He said, playing, playing golf. <laughs> I thought, uh, rugby, yes. <laughs> leg, yes. Boxing, yes. Golf? <laughs> what did you do? Get the smash your leg up or something? He said, no, I had those shoes with the steel spokes on when you stand in the grass so you can get anchored. And he said, I hit the ball and I went to turn and I forgot my foot was stuck. And when I turned, snap, 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 snap. I think it was, uh, I broke it in his, in his knee and then two, two places in the ankle broke. I said, oh. Anyway, I said, oh. So I was about to come up the stage and preach. And I says, so I said, oh, hang on. I just put my hand on his, on his uh, bandage. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. You've healed this fella. And I didn't have faith, great faith. I mean, I didn't have a word of knowledge that you're going to be healed. I said, oh, well, I just did what I know to do. I just stepped out and, be, and was in obedience to do the little that I do know. It was just an act of obedience. It wasn't an act of faith. There you go. It was an act of obedience. It wasn't an act of faith. You say, oh, but Pastor, you had faith to do that. But it's Listen, I know what it was. It was an act of obedience. Yes, it was faith because everything we do, we, we walk by faith. Our whole life is by faith. But in that context... <clears throat> what do you do when you don't have faith? I didn't have faith that God was going to heal him, but I had obedience. Do you know what God desires above sacrifice? Mer obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. And Jesus says, I love his words, he says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And I've found that if I just obey in obedience with the mercy of God to help people, that's all I have to do. Obedience and mercy. Not a big sacrifice of great faith, a big sacrifice, I mean, praying and fasting and warfaring. I just, you're right, Jane, it's John calling us, is it? Just say, Kia ora, John, we're in a service, mate. <laughs> Speaking of John, John was sitting there a week or two ago. Before that, Ines, Jean's sister, was sitting there. And uh, she'd been suffering a torn meniscus. And uh, she was sitting there, and unbeknown to her, before she came to church, uh, that night, the Holy Spirit said to me, there would be a person in the third row, and she's got a knee problem, and I've already, I have already healed her. I've already healed her. And, uh, and so I called out uh, someone in the third row, and no one put their hands up. I said, I'm sure it's the third row. And then Rosemary in the fourth row put her hand up, and she got healed of her knees. I said, oh, I must have got it wrong. But Ines was thinking, no, you didn't get it wrong, Normie. <laughs> she says, you and Jesus didn't get it wrong, Normie. <laughs> and, and, and she felt this presence come on her tingling, and then she felt like weeping, and then all the pain just left, disappeared, just disappeared. And she walked out without a walking stick, totally healed. She was just sitting there in the third row. And then um, last, was it last Sunday when John was sitting there and uh, John's had some uh, condition uh, on top of his head, uh, giving him pain or discomfort. And um, last Sunday I said, just put your hand on your heart and see what Jesus does. And just did a cut of care. And he said he felt emotional, he felt a tingling. And all that things just he left this church. He says, it's gone. It's gone. He called me over on, on um, the other day just to share with me. That's Jesus. I didn't even know he had that condition. Sometimes I know and sometimes I don't. When I know, that's you know, different. But when I don't know, when I don't have any faith, I just step out in love and obedience to God and to people. That's all I do. And guess what God does? Stuff. God does it. He does it. So what do I do when I don't have faith? I just do what I know to do. I just use common sense. <laughs> Sometimes, just do what you know to do. And, and a, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. Okay, next. So, the, so this guy, this is, his name is uh, Kelvin. He's the proprietor of Challenge, uh, the Challenge, um, the Challenge uh, petrol station. Just out of Ruawai, just before you go to Dargaval, he's on the, the, the end where you go to Dargaval, Ruawai. So go and get your gas from him. 
and he's still there. I, I rang him, and he, he said, I said, can I put your video up bro, on Facebook? He says, yeah. I said, how's your knee? How's your leg? He said, pie, my bro. And he says, put it up for the glory of Jesus. So this is Calvin. Thanks. For rural New Zealand. Yeah. I'll tell you what I couldn't do. I eat my ankle. This is Tuesday. And, uh, so you... Oh, what did, what yes. You um, the what? brother paid for me. God's worked for him. And fix my why why I am. Um, so do what you're going to do then. I couldn't do this. Wow. He looks like a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, bro. Yeah. So you broke your knee and... Knee and ankle. Ankle was two broken places. two spots. So it was the, holding the shin in place. It was just wobbling all over the place. <laughs> wow. And for two years you haven't been out of... Out of right, two years and about 80 kgs I've put on. Wow. wow. So now I can get back and lose all my weight and be sweet. <laughs> so, who's the healer? Jesus. Amen, bro. So imagine if I was there, I said, well, I don't have the faith. I just don't... I don't know. Pastor, could you come and pray for this guy? You've been there. Oh, I don't have the faith. Bring Pastor Norm. Bring Pastor Lance. Bring Pastor Jess. Bring Pastor Scotty. At Katie Pye, we're here to serve. But how about just stepping out with mercy and obedience to do what you've already been taught? Just have a go. That's all I do. I just have a go. And I'm astounded what God does. He does stuff. I'm not sure if I should. Well, maybe we'll go back to that number. Let's go to. Let's go to number four, please, Ken. Number four PowerPoint. Um, so I was in India, and this is a few minutes before Jesus raised a, a dead baby, a six-month-old baby from from the dead. Um, uh, I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea the baby was dead. I think if I did, I might have yelled out, ambulance. I had no idea. I didn't have great faith. In fact, I prayed for the kid uh, a, a night before and because he's in this fever. It's matted with blood, uh, blood with sweat, and he's lying in his mother's arms like this. And, uh, and they, these poor people can't afford to take to the hospital. There's no medicine. And, um, and so the baby had been like that for weeks, malnourished, couldn't suck the breast, and the mother's just holding this little baby. This, it was a terrible thing. Her, her husband had just been murdered a few months beforehand. So it's a terrible situation. It's a broken, broken hearted situation. And so I, I had Afi in Aroha, and I prayed for her. I prayed for that baby a couple of times, and I was annoyed that, oh man, the baby's still sick. <laughs> still like, Ugh. anyway. The second night, she's running down the aisle, bringing the, screaming, holding the baby. I said, like, oh no, here we go again. I'm frustrated the baby's not here, but we'll pray for the baby later on, Amma. Later on, just take a seat. But the Holy Spirit says, no, let her come. So, okay, come. And so my interpreter, David, <laughs> that's Pastor Solomon's uncle. That's the reason why we have a House of Breakthrough Church in Colonel, because that's his uncle. He was my interpreter. And David says to me, he said, when you touch the baby, the baby is no breath. It's not just him, it's the others who know medical stuff. He says, no breath. Body is cold. Baby is dead. Eyelids are, cl are closed. <laughs> I said, what? He said, baby is dead. Baby has been dead for 20, 30 minutes and back in mother's arms. Mother says, baby's not moving anymore. Baby's got cold. Baby was dead. I said, what? Next uh, vid clip, next PowerPoint, boom. That's just immediately after prayer. The baby just, so I did this. What did I pray? Uh, I was annoyed that my meeting was being interrupted. That's all. I said, damn, devil. I said, death and hell, get off this baby in Jesus' name. And immediately little boy's eyes popped open. He looked up at me, and I thought, far out. That was a, why didn't that happen yesterday? <laughs> That's a quick... He got healed. And then he sat up and that's him. He sat up in his mother's arms and he's looking around like, where am I now? And, uh, and that's when they told me, and their eyes were big as uh, David, he went white. He's pretty black, but he went white. <laughs> and when he told me the baby was dead, I went, ah, oh, I, did I have faith? I didn't have any faith for that. I didn't. 
I'm telling you the truth. I did not have any faith, but by an act of obedience and mercy. That's just, I just did what I know to do. I just did what I've been trained to do. I just did what, you know, what Jesus would do. Yeah, that's all we do. We just, an act of mercy and obedience, just do what, what we know Jesus would do. That's all. And let the, leave the rest to God. So that's generally how I operate and in, in minister in, in healings. Sometimes I've had faith. I've had the gift of faith, I think, three times. The first time I was a baby and had meningitis and was diagnosed to die in Dunedin Hospital. This is in Monomero. And when I prayed, the Lord showed, he said to me, no, the baby is not going to die. The baby is going to live. And I just knew the baby is not going to die. I just knew it. You, you couldn't talk me out of it. And I went straight down to the hospital. And I couldn't touch the baby because it was an incubator. But I prayed, and everybody's weeping and wailing. And the baby's dead. baby's going to die. I said, no, no, baby's fine. Baby's fine. Just like Jesus knew when he went to Lazarus, he knew he's going to come to life. Well, and so I said, baby's fine. And, um, and, and within a few days, the, whole, the baby's condition turned right around. Baby's alive and well and kicking to a young adult now. That was a gift of faith. I don't have that all the time. I wish I had. Another time, just recently, a few years ago, I think it was just before COVID, where there was a drought on the East Coast and uh, there was fi high fire risk and it hadn't rained for, for weeks and weeks and weeks and the ground was, was dry and the crops were failing and it was just, it was terrible. It was going to call a lot of hardship to the farmers and to our economy. And I was thinking, God, the, even the ground's crying out. It's like, <sighs> it's like I could sort of sense in my spirit. Um, is it your will that the ground that the, the, the ground suffers and that people are going to suffer? I don't think that's your will, Jesus. And he put in my heart, no, it's not my will. He says, I said, well, if it would rain, Lord, it would alleviate the suffering that's going to come and that's already here. He says, yes, it would. I says, well, how? and he says, pray for rain. <laughs> I need to pray for rain. I said, well, okay. And then, he put faith in me, and he says, pray for this, that I will make it rain within seven days. Very specific. I thought, what? He says, it will rain within seven days. And as soon as he said that, it came into my heart. I knew it was going to rain. And, and so I told Pastor Lance and Jess and Scotty were in the room. Remember that, Lance? Scotty, remember that, Jess? Hmm. Just they've got to be a witness, so I'm telling, not telling porkies. <laughs> you don't know who I am. But, and so, um, so every day, I looked at the weather, and its long-range forecast is a bright sun and heat, 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 high temperatures. The fire risk was high, high, high. And every time I looked at it, I had no shake, no sort of unbelief. There was just the gift of faith. Now nah, it's going to rain. Now nah, it's going to rain. Now nah, it's going to rain. This is so funny. This is so funny. It says all this, but Jesus, it's going to rain within seven days. Before seven days are up, it will rain. And on the fifth day, the rain came out of nowhere. The forecast didn't set come. It, and it was gentle rain. It wasn't just harsh that it overflowed and flooded. It was gentle rain. And it got just deeper and deeper. And it just massaged our whenua. And uh, it was just beautiful rain. That's the gift of faith. And I think some people think, I walk in that all the time. I don't. I just walk in mercy and obedience to what I know to do. What I know to do when it comes to healing the sick anyway is Mark 16, 17. Jesus said, if I lay hands on the sick, they're going to recover. They're going to get better. That's what he said. So that's all I do. Okay? <laughs> I walk by faith, but I don't have the gift of faith necessarily. We all know how to, we, you know, we meant to walk by faith. So it's just an act of obedience, an act of mercy and obedience. That's all I do. And God does the miracle. The Holy Spirit confirms what I do. Why? What do I do? I, Jesus said, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So Holy Spirit hears that. And so when he sees me do it, when he sees you do that, he says, okay, I'm going to confirm the words of Jesus through what you just did. So the Holy Spirit comes down and does what Jesus said he will do. Holy Spirit does the healing. He's, he heals. Jesus couldn't heal anybody until the Holy Spirit came on him. Acts 10.38. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. And he went about doing good and healing 
all those oppressed of the devil. Sure, it was Jesus that did the healing. He was a vehicle, but it was the power of the Holy Spirit through him. And sure, it's, we're just the vessels. We're the hose, and he is the water that flows through us. And the water does, it gives life to the seed, not the hose. The hose is, I'm just a hose. I'm a vessel, you're a vessel. But we carry this treasure, the Bible says, in earthen vessels, the treasure of Jesus, the treasure of the presence of God. And how do we release it? Oh, I've got to have great faith. No, you don't. Just mercy and obedience. Just do what Jesus said you would have you to do, and he does the rest. Now, that's in the context of, of physical healings. What do I do when I don't have great faith? I just pray for them and speak God's word out and allow Holy Spirit to confirm. <clears throat> um, well, oh, 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 well, yes, Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves you so much. Yeah, I will show you that one. Could you go back to uh, number uh, number three, please, Ken? A Muslim grandmother cried out to Jesus, if you are real, bring my granddaughter back from the dead. A Muslim. She's in our church in India. Her husband had become a Christian and was coming to church. Their daughter was pregnant, but the doctor says, you have a, a blood condition, and when the baby is born, uh, either we can only save one of you, the, bum, the mother or the baby. So the parents decided, doctors, save our daughter. Maybe she will have another baby. So when the baby was born, they knew the baby was going to be born dead or stillborn. The, the Muslim grandmother, so when baby comes forth, after baby comes forth, I will divorce my husband for he's now infidel. He's not a Muslim, so I will divorce him. And she's in the hospital with the daughter. And he is, Abraham is in our church praying. And so the, the, the daughter has the baby, and the baby is dead. The nurses take the baby and throw the baby in the, into the rubbish heap, body pit. Out there, at the back. The Muslim woman, she told me this herself. She said, maybe all these bad things happening to me, my husband leaving, well, my husband becoming a Christian, my, my daughter losing her baby, maybe all these bad things is because the true God is Jesus and I'm not following him. And so this is what she said to me. She says, if you are true God, Jesus, four hours after baby is thrown in the rubbish bin. And the nurses check, baby's dead. It's just a body, stillborn. Uh, four, uh, four, at least four hours later, she said, if Jesus is real, Jesus, if you are real, bring my granddaughter back. <laughs> and so a nurse walked past her, and this lady said, get my granddaughter. She said, what granddaughter? Get my granddaughter. She said, She's dead. Go get the Indians are very forceful. Go get. <laughs> so the nurse went out and went through all the body parts and found the body of this dead little girl. And she pinched it. And when she pinched the skin of the little baby, it came back to life. Came back to life. And so she brought the baby back to the mother. And the mother became a Christian. And the daughter became a Christian. And they still wear their Muslim stuff, but they're Christians. They come to our church. They love Jesus. Why am I sharing this? When I heard this, I said, Lord, what's up with that? She's not even a Christian. <laughs> she just says, if you're real, and you did that for her? He says, I desire mercy above sacrifice. I love people, he said. I love people. I says, well, some of us Christians pray. We don't get great stuff like that. You need to uncomplicate things. You need to uncomplicate yourself and have the faith of a child. I said, really? So I just share that with you, Fana. It might mess with your head. It did with me, but I, think I just see the mercy of God. He was willing to intervene and bring a little baby girl back from the dead. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Could you go now to page uh, number six? And you'll be happy to know I, I blocked you out of this picture, babe. <laughs> now, the picture is meant, I want you to look at the car behind us. The car behind us is a Mark IV Cortina. 
That's the car we drove up from North Otago, Omaru, to Gizzi in. To do the will of God. <clears throat> now, to come to Gisborne was an act of faith. And I think, obviously, God breathed into us to come to Gisborne and start a church from nothing, from a people we've never been among before. That was an act of faith. I can't say we had great, great faith, but we just had expectation, didn't we, babe? Yeah. We just knew God had come before us, and God was going to do this, and God was going to start a church, and God was going to heal the sick, because I've just come back from India, and what I saw in India, the dead being raised, the cripples walking, the blind seeing, he said, that's what I'm going to do when you go to, Ind uh, when you go to Gisborne. So we had that faith, but it wasn't a gift of faith, it was, it was faith. <clears throat> okay, so there's a difference between walking in faith and the gift of faith. Do you understand there's a difference? When you put your foot on the brake, that's faith. You don't know whether it's going to stop or not, but it's an act of faith. We just didn't expect it to stop. So walking by faith. So we came to Gibson, of course, and, and, and the result speaks for itself. But when we came to Gisborne, our car got stolen. <laughs> this car got stolen. It got its wheels taken off it, and then it got trashed. And I said, God, how am I going to get around and serve you now? I didn't have a great gift of faith for another car. We didn't even have the money. <laughs> so we, what little we got out of the insurance, I'll never forget, the insurance broker thought I ripped, I sold it to the mongrel mob and then I was pocketing the money. He came in, he, he was an ex-detective and he was grilling me. I says, what? Who are you, mate? I'm the pastor of this church. Yeah, yeah, well, we get lots of stories. <laughs> never forget that. Never forget that. You think I'm... Yeah, far, man. As it was, the Mongol mob did steal it too. <laughs> Some of the associations. And so I thought, well, we've got a little bit of money. We'll just have to find a car. And we found one, uh, and it was a Art Paul Cortina station wagon. And so we did that all up, and it was wonderful. It was gutless, yes. But we were driving it around, it looked flash, but it was slow as a wet hen. And um, one day I went to pick my daughter up out of a uh, Gisborne Girls High. I'm sitting there in the traffic. Next thing, boom! And this nutter in the car behind me smashed it into the back of me because he was watching, looking at something else and wrote the car off. This is only within weeks of our first car being stolen. Wrote the car off. Our new car that God gave us. <laughs> wrote it off. The heck come in. So we had less insurance money. Another insurance claim. Guess what that guy thought I was up to? He could, and so it was a three-car collision. The car hit me into the front of the car, another car behind another car. Anyway, so we got a little bit less money now, and the only car we could afford was an old uh, uh, Bluebird. It had primer all over it. It had holes in the doors on the inside. It, well, it looked like, oh, man, it looked like a coasty car, bro. <laughs> a farm car. And, uh, but cool, it could go, man, it had Guts, it had power better than the old Cortina. Man, I liked it. Just didn't like it so much, but you know. And then God gave me some faith. And he said, I'll give you a new car. I says, yeah, Father, what sort of car? He said, what sort of car do you want? I said, I want a white Nissan with air conditioning. Because we never had air conditioning before. You don't need that down on it's so freezing. I said, a white Nissan with air conditioning. He says, okay. And he put the gift of faith in me for that. And I would say to the kids when we were driving down Dalator Road uh, in the old heap, one day we're going to be driving a white Nissan and it's so hot we're going to have air conditioning. You get that, Cal's? You get that, Todd? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that, darling? <laughs> one day, one day, one day. It took weeks and weeks and weeks before finally uh, and then some money got, came to us and there was a white Nissan in the, one of the yards in Gizzi it had air conditioning and we got it. So you put the, second, the next number seven up, please, Ken. So here's the story of the cars. Okay? <laughs> That's the station wagon that got written off. That's the, the, the bluebird that I loved. And that's the white Nissan we finally got. So it wasn't the gift of faith when it got written the first time. I was, oh, just by faith, just by faith and obedience. You just got to use common sense sometimes. Instead of looking for faith, just use common sense sometimes. And look for another car. Okay, pray by all means. Pray by all means. And instead of looking for great faith, look to Jesus. So 
what do I do in this situation? He, I found him and said, well, go and find another car. I said, oh, okay. So I found another car. It got written off. I said, what do I do now? He said, go find another car that you can afford. I said, hmm. So I went and found a car on the side of the road, by the way. That one was on the side of the road. <laughs> we got it for $1,300. Yeah, it was a deal, man. <laughs> That's a lot. That's way back in the 90s. That's back in 91. 91, 92, anyway. <laughs> and then, so we went and got this thing. Just, what do I do now, Lord? He says, what sort of car do you want? Then he, he said, what? And I said that, and he put faith in my heart. And he says, you're going to get a white Primera with air conditioning. And we did. So the gift of faith, it would be wonderful if it always come, but most times it doesn't come for me anyway. That's my experience. And most times it probably doesn't come for you also. Otherwise, I'd be raising the dead left, right, and center. Stopping the rain, stopping the floods in Auckland. Why can't I just turn that faith on to stop the floods? Because the Holy Ghost gave it to me, and he gives his gifts as he chooses. I don't question what God wants to do. I just do the best to obey him and allow him to do the rest. So what do I do when I feel I have no faith? I just obey the best I can. I just do what I know Jesus has shown me to do. I just lose often with, with sick people and, and helping people, compassion and obedience to the Lord. Compassion and obedience. That's all I do. And the lady that ran out of the, up, up on the stage from the, in India, the crippled woman, I was just being obedient to what Jesus said. Stand up and walk. Boom, up she came. Wow. It wasn't a gift of faith. It was just obedience to what his will was. So next one, please, Kim. So just step out in obedience and do the little you know. For healing, it says in Mark 16, 18, you lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. So you don't need the gift of faith, just obedience and mercy. And that's how most of my miracles, I've, most of the miracles I've seen, it's been just laying hands on the sick. And I remember going up to the hospital and praying for a lady who was on her deathbed. And uh, in fact, the whole uh, ward was made like a little mariah. The, they had the mattresses there, the fauna were lying there, and because they expect her to die within a few days. And she was, her cancer was terminal. It's all through her body, inside her, her lungs. I went out there and I prayed for her. Well, I talked with her, and she says, What a shame. I was about to retire. She's already 70. But she's about to retire and go on a holiday. So we sort of joked about, well, where you're going is going to be the holiday out of all, out of this world. <laughs> and she's, yes, yeah, yeah. So she was, she was okay. But she's in pain. She's on pain threshold from 1 to 10. She's on 10. And she's on intravenous morphine. And she'd been in pain for, for you know, a few weeks. And she was just slowly declining, and they're just waiting for her last breath. So I went up and just talked with her. I had no great faith. I was thinking, oh, man, what do I do? Has anyone had that sort of thought when you go, oh man, what do I do? You know Jesus is with you. But, oh man, what do I do? All I knew what to do is to do what, to be obedient to what the only thing I know what to do. In that context, I was to lay hands on her and pray for her. And it's not a matter of whether I've got faith on it. Just do it. Just be obedient. I desire mercy above sacrifice. So I prayed for her. I said, Why why walk down the she said this, what a rascal. She didn't tell me straight away because I would have been blurting it all over the nation. I didn't find out until two weeks later. It was her daughter-in-law told me what happened to her. So I had to track it down. I said, is this true? She says, yeah. <laughs> said, Far out. Anyway, thank God. The miracle happened. So what happened to her? So this woman, terminal, dying. Can't get off the bed without help. She's lying there. She said, the moment you touched me and prayed, the moment you touched me, so I didn't know this, the moment you touched me, the act of obedience, the act of obedience and mercy, that's all it was. When I don't have great faith, just act in obedience and mercy. The moment you touched me, she said, all oh, the pain left me. After weeks of pain at the highest level, boom, it's just gone. And she said, then I started floating. I said, what? I didn't see you float. She said, no, I felt like I was floating. Off, off, the, off the bed. I said, really? Yeah. And, and she said, so I said to myself, I feel like I'm healed. 
So she said that. Then she said, oh, I am healed. <laughs> she said, I'm going to have a shower. So she said, the nurses, I'm having a shower. They said, I will help you. She said, don't, I don't need you to help me. She unplugged herself, got off the bed, got in the shower herself, walked out. I don't know what the nurses were thinking. They discharged her from hospital in two days. The lady who's got a few breaths left, she's only got days to live. And so they sent her to Waikato and got a biopsy done and got more scans done. And they brought them back. And it was on the, that was the Sunday I prayed for her. On the Friday, she's up at the hospital. Her son's a cop, so this is verified. He was sitting there. And the anesthetist, the surgeon, uh, the palliative care, they're all standing there. And he says, they're all just standing in a row. And he's the, the doctor sitting at the table with these two sets of, I don't know, tests, X-ray results, I don't know what. He's holding these. And he's looking at both of them going, hmm, hmm. <laughs> and he looks at, at uh, her and he, she, he said, how are you feeling? She said, oh, great, great. He said, that's good. He said, we don't know what's happened to you. He, he, she said, why? Well, you, the scan, so you're full of pancreas cancer. Your lungs are full. You've got spots on your liver. And the biopsy shows you're riddled with it. This recent one we just did the other day, the biopsies come back and there's absolutely no trace of cancer from the biopsy. And the x-rays show that your lungs and your pancreas are completely clear. What happened, he said. <laughs> she said, cut a gear, cut a gear. And the doctor says, well, it wasn't our medicine. God bless him for being humble enough to admit that. It wasn't our medicine. Now, she's passed on since, but she lived for about five, six years after that. Five, six years. Did I have great faith for that? And so I've, I've looked back and I've just meditated and looked at all the miracles that God has done. And most of them I had no faith, let alone great faith. It was just an act of obedience and mercy. And God did it. That's all. So I look at all these miracles that are far out. Imagine if I hadn't just acted in a simple obedience and mercy. They would be dead now. Don't let the search for great faith put you off from great love. Just love people. Just do an act of mercy and obedience. Do whatever you know to do. With the car situation, ask Jesus. Look for Jesus in the storm. Not the storm. Look for Jesus, what his will is. Not great faith. Just look for what Jesus wants you to do. And whatever he tells you to do, he will give you the faith to do it. If you look for great faith, like me, you get all headaches. You feel like you have to do something. You feel compelled. I've got to do this. As if healing's up to me. If it's healing's up to you. We can't heal nothing. Jesus is the healer. Yes? So it's learning just to... Mm. Okay, come into a close. What's, what's the next PowerPoint, please? Thank you. Instead of looking for great faith, ask Jesus, what's his will for you in this situation? So it might be a job loss. Oh, God, I have faith to get through this. I don't know if I can get through this. Well, how about just asking Jesus, what's your will for me through this? Look for Jesus. And whatever he says to you, just be obedient in that. That's all. And he will lead you on a path of breakthrough. Um, you might be having a relationship raru raru going on. So, oh, I don't know if I've got the faith to hang in there. I don't know if I've got the faith to make it work. Stop looking for great faith and just look to Jesus. Say, Lord, what's your will for me through this that I'm going through? And just follow Jesus one step at a time. Just one day at a time. Don't look down the week, down the month, down the years. Just one day at a time. That's how I that's how I live. That's walking by faith. Not necessarily the gift of faith, but it's walking by faith. And, and many times, just use common sense. Go find another car with the insurance money. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm praying. Oh, I bind the devil from stealing my car. I rebuke you, Satan. Next minute, my other car gets written off. Oh, that's... Come <laughs> in. Lord, aren't you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Doesn't mean you're gonna. Doesn't mean you, everything's gonna, always going to be comfortable. It's not the devil attacking you. It's just a little bit of inconvenience in your life. Okay, you're not going to die. You're not dying. 
He's just inconvenienced. It's not persecution, it's inconvenience. Persecution is in the places overseas, our churches, where you'll get your head chopped off if you say you're a Christian. Well, you'll be blown up. Your church can have suicide. But that's persecution. That's not inconvenience. That's persecution. Okay? But what you're having is just a bit of inconvenience. Just, you know, just use some common sense. Use your money. Use some common sense and find a car. <laughs> okay. Amen. And, and then step out in obedience and do it. So it's a, well, a bit of a funny story. Well, I don't, not funny. I mean, the, 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 some of the stories are funny. I mean, there's miracles after miracles. You've been here. You've seen it, finally, some of you. You've seen the miracles. And um, so we're going to close right now, and um, I'm going to do an act of uh, obedience and mercy for those who are suffering in their bodies this morning. And I'm going to do what I know to do, which is pray for anybody who's got sickness in their body, you don't have to come down the front. You don't have to. Meet, I don't have to even touch you because I know the Holy Ghost will touch you. And um, and if you've got pain or, or sickness or affliction in your body, but if or not just your physical body, maybe it's a relationship issue, maybe it's a financial issue, maybe it's something else, not naturally, not literally physical healing. Still, put your hand on your heart, and I'm going to ask if Jesus would. I'll agree with you. If you, if you agree, I agree. Two of us agree as to touching anything. Jesus said he'll do it for us. So he, he's, he will bring a breakthrough. So just once we pray, once I pray, you just believe that Jesus has done it. That's all. Just receive it. And the Holy Spirit will back it. Um, it might not happen today, but just... Yeah, you, me, and Jesus, let's two or three gather together and agree with one thing. Jesus, I'll do it. I'll get it. It's done. I've got your back. So for those who need healing, I'm going to pray for those with, with any affliction in your body from the top of your head to your neck. Okay? I'm going to pray for that part of your body. So this is something I know to do. So it, it might be something to do with your eyes, your ears, your, your, your nose, your, uh, your throat, your tongue cheek, your skin, your hair. Sorry, I've never prayed and seen the hair come back, so I don't know about that one. <laughs> Holy Ghost can do anything. <laughs> so if there's any affliction you're, you're suffering, old sporting injury from the top of your head to your neck, if there's any area of the, your body that's in malady or suffering, would you just put your hand on your heart right now? And, um, and let's just agree with this. Jesus, you t- Bible, your word says that you took our sin in your own physical body. You said, my body was wounded so yours could be healed. Isaiah said that, the prophet. Peter said that, but your scriptures say that. Your scriptures say that when you forgive our iniquity, you heal our disease. And it says you're the same yesterday and today and forever, Jesus. This is your word. This is your truth. Holy Spirit, you were there. You are the one that can testify to this because you are the only witness that's alive today that's in this room that can testify and bear witness. And Jesus, you said Holy Spirit will confirm your words. Holy Spirit will bear witness to your truth and glorify Jesus. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here now and come upon those who are suffering any form of affliction in the head area. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, how do you know you're healed? If you couldn't hear properly, couldn't see properly. One of the guys at WAC, Warrior Course, yesterday, uh, he said when we did this prayer, the Lord said, take your glasses off. So he took his glasses off, and lo and behold, he can see all the way to the back of the room, he could read the writing. Yeah. So, it's an act of faith. He took his glasses off. He says, fine, I can see better. So whatever you need to do now, the Holy Spirit's touched you, touched your body. You have to check out you know, if you couldn't hear out of one ear, if you can hear now, if, if you couldn't see properly, if you can see clearer, if you couldn't breathe properly through your nasal, if you can breathe easier. If there's something changed and you had an affliction from here to here, just just move yourself around, check it out, because faith's an action. Okay? And if you feel something's happened, that there's something's changed in 
that moment of that prayer. Will you just indicate? Just lift your hand. Okay, way down at the back. Anyone else? Just lift your hand. Just raise, indicate. Who else? Who else? Don't be fakama, don't be shy. See, whenever Jesus does a healing, he expects you to lift your hand. He expects you to, to acknowledge what he did. There were 10 lepers he healed, and only one came back and gave thanks. And Jesus says, where's the, where's, wasn't there 10? Are you the only one? So please do not dishonor Jesus. Please honor Jesus. If he's done something for you, acknowledge it. Give him glory by at least just lifting a hand. Okay? So it, I know there's a couple more that God's touched. Just oh, thank you. God bless you. One, two. How, who else? Who else? Don't I not say three. Now I didn't touch you, and I don't have time to come to you and get you to testify, but I just want to show you fun. Eh? God's touching people, and it's not with great faith. It's just being obedient in the love of God and doing what He said we would do. That when we pray in His name, God will do stuff. Okay, we're going to pray for the people now with any sickness or affliction in your body from your neck down to your, your, your puku. Okay? So, put your hand on your heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come and confirm what Jesus did. Lord, from the heart to the heart, <clears throat> to the lungs, to the puku, to the stomach, to the pancreas, to the liver, to the kidneys, to the blood, to the spine, to the vertebra. Lord, every part of that part of the body, that, Lord, your body was literally whipped, blood splattered off the, your back, as the whip ripped your skin open and the pain you felt, Son of God. And Holy Ghost, you were there. You saw the blood splatter. You saw the pain Jesus endured. You saw the wounds of his back. And you're the only one that confirmed that by his, his wounds, people have been healed today because of what you, Jesus, did. So, Father, if you got your hand there, just say, Thank you, Jesus. I receive my healing. Amen. Okay, so I don't know how you check yourself with you, but if you feel better, if you feel something's happened, there's a change taking place, we just indicate, just lift your hand, just lift indicate. If you feel your heart, your anything in your body is better in that area from there. You know, do something, move around. There's a lady sitting there uh, a few weeks ago. She said, I'm sure it's me. I'm sure my back feels better. I can hardly walk. I'm sure it's me. And she says, yeah, I can. it's no pain. And instead of putting her hand out, she walked outside and did a little cunny cunny. He said, I am healed. I said, well, you should have done it here. Give glory to God. So he's, he's done a stomach healing right now. There's a swelling in their sides disappeared. You know who you are. Just give, give glory to Jesus. Lift your hand right now. Come on. This is, a, this is not just a preach. This is an, an act of it. Over there. Now I know there's a troubled relationship. I know there's a storm going on. Put your hand on your heart. I know the future looks, apparently looks bleak from all outcomes, but... Put your hand on your heart. And we thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against your people will prosper. And every tongue raised up in judgment against them. In the name of Jesus, we cast down every word, every curse, and every weapon. We command them to fall powerless to the dirt. You said that we would be blessed when we go out and when we come in. And that if the enemy did come against us one way, you would scatter them before our face seven directions. So we decree that now, Lord, over any one of your sons and your daughters here who are in a, a conflict situation. We rebuke that work of the enemy be scattered before your face in the name of Jesus. We rebuke contention and strife and anxiety and fear. We rebuke you from the situation. And we thank you, Lord. We invite your presence, your peace, and your joy into the situation. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, Father. Enjoy the rest of the day. See you next Sunday.